everyone. I'm just testing this out. We're going to give it five more minutes and we'll start at 12 o'clock on the dot. I have all of my other tabs closed so I can really focus on this. Really excited to talk to everyone today. Looks like we have four more minutes, so just stay put. We'll give everyone else a chance to join if they want to, and you'll always be able to find this video under the videos section on Build Up Dietitians. more minutes. Did anyone watch the start of the Olympics this morning? We were watching them lighting the torch. It's always exciting. Those of you who are here, feel free to share where you're from. I would love to learn about you, see if there is any way we can connect, see if we live close by. you will not hear a toddler in the background it is a work from home day without child care so if you do I apologize in advance Kansas City hi Amy thanks for joining us North Carolina yes Coco I actually I'll be back there in a couple weeks we have a wedding in Raleigh so I'll have to message you separately about that Boston Oh, that's near my hometown. I grew up in Rhode Island, spent a lot of time in Boston in my youth. Actually heading up that way next week. Looking forward to it. Let's see where else. Down in NC in the mountains. Asheville area. Is, is that correct, Leah, if I remember correctly? Okay, less than a minute. Just want to be respectful of people's times if they're planning on coming on right at noon. So we are almost ready to begin. If you're just joining us, we are about to get started. Feel free to share where you're from in the comments. So my name is Sarah Schlichter. I am a registered dietitian. I have a master's in public health, and I live in the Frederick, Maryland area. We're an hour outside of DC. Uh, prior to this, I lived in just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. I was there for over 10 years and did grad school in that area, and that's actually how I got in contact with 
North Carolina sweet potatoes, who I am representing today. And today we're going to talk all about sweet potatoes, their nutrition benefits, how RDs can use them in client work, perhaps with different populations, how they can apply to pretty much all diets out there, dietary lifestyles, um, ways of eating that people follow. And we'll also talk about some resources that you can use in your practice for yourself, for your clients, some helpful ways that you can feel like you have some support, whether it's just some helpful blog tips, some easy recipes, and we also have a really exciting toolkit announcement that we would love for RDs to be able to download and use in their practice. So again, as I mentioned, my name is Sarah Schlichter. I own the blog and brand Bucketless Tummy. You can find me on social media. It's Bucketless Tummy underscore RD on Instagram. And on Facebook, I'm Bucketless Tummy. And I don't get on Twitter as much. I can only manage so much right now. My website is bucketlesstummy.com and I share recipes there. I talk a lot about intuitive eating, which is something that I personally incorporate in my life, but also my practice with clients. And then I also talk about sports nutrition. I work with a lot of runners specifically, and we're gonna talk about how sweet potatoes can pertain to that as well. But those would be the main niches that I focus on. So I was not um, one of those people who knew I wanted to be a dietitian right out of school. In fact, my undergrad was in sports management and business, and I spent a few years after college working in athletics and sports and doing some journaling, and it was sort of the journalism field of college athletics, doing statistics, writing reviews on the website about the games and interviewing athletes. So I feel like I've always had this passion for writing and communicating information, and eventually I figured out I wanted to do nutrition. I took an intro to nutrition course, really loved it, made the decision to go back to school. So fortunately, I didn't have too many prereqs. I was originally exercise science in undergrad before I switched to business. So I've changed my mind several times, but I also want to encourage other RDs that that is, it's still possible to get to your career path. So if you are an RD to be or someone thinking about becoming a dietitian, it is definitely possible and feel free to reach out to me if you want strategies about how I did that or prereqs or getting into grad school, any of that. But that is sort of my story. Graduated from grad school in 2015 with a master's in public health and nutrition. And at that point, I was living in North Carolina. I did mention that is how I got introduced to North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission. There was um, a blog trip that I went on and after that we just kept in touch and the relationship grew from there. So if you are a dietitian looking to work with a different brand or commodity entity or something that you feel strongly about, always encourage you to reach out to them, continue to talk with them, improve that relationship. Don't just think that you know making an introduction is enough. It usually takes a lot of nourishing and they want to make sure that it is something that you're really passionate about and knowledgeable about. So I am the dietitian for North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission, and we are doing a lot of cool things right now. So I did mention in the beginning that I do have a toolkit, some resources for dietitians that we're going to talk about. I was looking at a survey beforehand, and a lot of dietitians wanted to know where to go, aside from maybe the USDA website. We don't really know where to go for sweet potato information. So now hopefully I will have a solution to share with you where you can go for recipes, for nutrition, um, for industry news if you want more on agriculture, anything like that. It's sort of a one-stop shop for you. So let's start, start by talking about the nutrition benefits. And I also do want to say if you have questions, I'm going to remember, hopefully remember to keep checking the the chat okay so where did bucket list tummy come from that's a great question so during my dietetic internship I spent some time out in Portland Oregon and I was working on Nike with their dietitian the Nike campus I was really interested in worksite wellness and it was really fun to kind of be on the Nike campus seeing the athletes there seeing the employees helping to fuel them and if you've ever been out west or you live out in the Portland area, I envy you because they're just really, they just seemed ahead of the time in terms of food options and coffee and running trails and happy, there was just so much going on and food was a central part of that culture and I really liked it. So I started a bucket list essentially 
of places I wanted to eat while I was there and coffee shops and ice cream places. And I sort of, I sort of started Bucket List Tummy as a blog to cross off where I've been and what I thought about it, writing like little restaurant reviews. And that worked for a while. I was reviewing restaurants and talking about places that I was enjoying in Portland. But then as I started learning more about nutrition or passed the RD exam, I wanted to start talking more about nutrition. So it sort of evolved as my career changed and I became more competent and confident talking about nutrition with clients. So my blog content changed and started talking more from a helpful point of view and how I'm working with clients and some recipes that I enjoy perhaps before a run or after a run or recipes that contain protein, fat, and carbohydrates, so really balancing them. So I really started using it as an educational tool for others, and it sort of just grew from there. So Bucket List Tummy just stuck. I can't imagine changing the name or brand at this point because I've had this blog for six years and counting now, and that's just the, the name that I've kept on all of my social media handles. So that's how that started. So a little bit about the nutrition of sweet potatoes. So most of us here are dietitians, so I'm sure I don't need to educate you about how nutritious they are. I know some people, some entities call them a superfood, but nutritionally speaking, sweet potatoes are a wonderful food and they pretty much apply to all dietary lifestyles. So let's talk about some of the benefits and how we can convey that to our clients. So fiber, fiber is something that many Americans aren't getting enough of. So including sweet potatoes can be a great way to increase fiber, mainly insoluble fiber. A medium sweet potato has four to five grams of fiber. And assuming that someone is eating the skin, which that's something that we can recommend to clients to do to increase their fiber and nutrients, they'll be getting more fiber that way. Vitamin A, so one medium sweet potato is going to offer more than 100% of the RDA for vitamin A. So we can cross that off the list by eating sweet potatoes. We're also going to get vitamin C. So we know both of those are important for immunity, skin health, eye health, everything like that. So a me medium sweet potato, it's between 30 to 40% of your daily allotment of vitamin C. But if we're talking about different dietary patterns, perhaps someone who follows a plant-based or vegetarian or vegan lifestyle, just reminding them that sweet potatoes with the vitamin C can be a great way to help improve iron absorption through other forms in their diet. So always, I'm always trying to keep conscious of things like that and meeting clients where they are. Of course, everyone is going to pick an eating style that works for them and, and we, I really try to value that when working with clients, but also provide suggestions or if we're low in certain nutrients, how can we improve that? So just kind of being aware of the different nutrients that sweet potatoes offer. In terms of heart health, so when we talk about heart, heart health, cardiovascular health, we're often talking to clients about decreasing sodium and limiting a lot of foods, but I find that it's more empowering to talk about, well, what can we add to the diet? Sweet potatoes, for example, are high in potassium, and we know that potassium and sodium have an inverse relationship. So if we're able to add in potassium, it may still be important to limit sodium, but it changes the conversation a little bit, and I find that clients react a little bit more, a little less stress if we're talking about, well, we could include this rather than limit this, this, and this. And then sweet potatoes are also going to have an array of micronutrients, zinc, um, a little bit of iron, plenty of antioxidants. So really talking to clients about the benefits that all of those can have in their diet. So that's one thing that I usually start with when talking about sweet potatoes, talking with different clients, following different diets, anything like that. I will say a lot of clients, and even it sounds like dietitians are a little bit confused about how to use sweet potatoes in the kitchen. Maybe it's just the general, we'll bake them or we'll mash them or we'll make sweet potato fries. And all of those can be wonderful ways to enjoy sweet potatoes, but I want to remind you that they are so versatile and there are so many more creative ways that we can use them in the kitchen. So for example, one thing I like to do, and again, I have two small children. I have a three-year-old daughter and an 11-month-old daughter, and we have done a form of feeding baby lead weaning for both of them where essentially 
I've just kind of fed them different foods, maybe prepared a little bit differently of what we're eating. And sweet potatoes have been awesome and really easy to feed children at different stages because they have so many different textures that they can take on. So mashing them or pu pureeing them can be great, but maybe I'll also throw that puree in a muffin recipe. There's these sweet potato zucchini muffins that we make a lot, or a sweet potato quick bread, or you can even make sweet potato hummus or a sweet potato cookie dough is another thing we do with mashed sweet potato and kind of mixing some maple syrup in, some peanut butter, throw it in a blender. Another thing I've done is then roll it into balls and freeze them and put them in the freezer and you kind of have these mini cookie dough bites. So the great thing about sweet potatoes is they're naturally sweet. So we're able to use that to our advantage, especially with children who have, at least my children, have a sweet preference for taste. So we are using sweet potatoes a lot. Another out of the box way you can think about using sweet potatoes or encouraging clients maybe who are looking for some new recipes is in turkey burgers or hamburgers. One thing I like to do, one of the more popular recipes on my site is taking pureed sweet potato. So usually to do that, I'll just microwave it, microwave a sweet potato, six to eight minutes about that. Um, sometimes I'll flip it halfway and then you don't have to worry about the time consuming part of cooking a sweet potato. So once it cools after the microwave, I'll take the flesh out and I'll throw that, mix it with ground turkey, ground chicken, even ground beef. And usually I'll throw some spices in, some of my favorites are like garlic powder. I use a little bit of ginger and Italian seasoning and then you could grill them or pan sear them or bake them or go from there. So it's just a different way to use sweet potatoes, but also we're taking that burger and we are amping up the nutrition content a lot. We talked a little bit about all of the nutritious benefits of sweet potatoes. So think about ways that we can have clients add them to a single meal just by mixing a sweet potato in. Another thing I've done with in the kitchen that's kind of a new way to use sweet potatoes is adding them to a pasta dish. So mac and cheese, if, if you have young kids or even athletes, pasta dishes are very popular and carb heavy. So what if we were to increase the antioxidant content or increase the vitamin A, vitamin C in that pasta, add more fiber, mash sweet potatoes in with the sauce or even just mash it with cheese over the pasta. Uh, we do these mini, I'm blanking on the term, um, tater tots with sweet potatoes and kale and I'll puree it in a food processor and then bread them a little bit, bake them and they're just little mini tater tots. So that's another way to do it and I just find that reminding people, dietitians and colleagues and clients that there are so many different ways you can enjoy a sweet potato flavor. Maybe a baked sweet potato or mashed sweet potato is not your favorite way of enjoying them, but there are so many other ways that we can still get these benefits. And in the kitchen, whether someone likes to cook or not, there's, there's plenty of ways we can incorporate without a lengthy recipe. So NC Sweet Potatoes, their recipe, it's just ncsweetpotatoes.com. They have a whole tab under their recipe section. by vegan, vegetarian, um, heart healthy, kid friendly, athlete focused. So we've really tried to make it easy for people to find recipes based on their dietary preference or lifestyle. And in the comments, it looks like we have someone linking to those just to make it easy for you to see. And also on that sweetpotatoes.com, we have a section under nutrition. So if you are a dietitian, maybe looking for links to studies, or things that you can talk about with your client, just head to the nutrition section and you'll be able to see some of the research there. Under that tab is where you'll also be able to download the dietitian toolkit. So this is something, it was a labor of love for me last year during the pandemic. We really put this idea into light and I'm very proud of it. So it's month by month, what we do here is we talk about the benefits of nutrition for different dietary lifestyles, um, for different 
monthly themes of the year. So for example, I believe July is food safety month, which is now. So maybe that's something that you would want to talk about with your clients if they're going to a lot of outdoor barbecues or cookouts. And what does that look like? Um, for heart healthy month, we have heart healthy recipes. And another thing about the toolkit is we have social media copy that we've already written out. And all you have to do is maybe personalize it to your brand or your channel and you can share it. So whether you work in the retail sector as a grocery store dietitian or you work in private practice or you work as a spokesperson or you're contributing to media outlets, this is hopefully a resource that can help you have all of this information at your disposal without spending a lot of time searching. So I encourage you to download it. Um, again, this is the print version, but you can download a version on the website if you go to ncsweetpotatoes.com, go under the nutrition tab, just put your name and your email address in there and you'll be able to get it sent straight to your email. We are also always open to feedback. If there are things in there that maybe we're missing, we didn't touch upon, or if you have future ideas, please, please let us know. We do hope to soon be developing an RD ambassador program where we are having more feedback from RDs and it might look like monthly goodies or different content being sent out that you can use with clients, whether it's handouts or different swag items like that. So that's something that I will probably be spearheading. We're hoping to start that now. So if that's something you're interested in, you can, again, if you sign up for the toolkit, we will have your email and contact information on hand for that. Um, let's just check in here. Seeing people from Illinois, Chicago, San Antonio, if you're just joining us, please do feel free to let me know where you're from. I am in the Maryland area outside of DC. Okay, there's a link to the toolkit in the chat now. Does your organization also have information about other colored sweet potatoes? Yes, we do. Um, there's plenty of posts about the many varieties. I was actually surprised about how many varieties of sweet potatoes there are. and. Depending on where you live, you'll probably have access to a little bit more variety than someone else, or maybe less. So being aware of that. So purple sweet potatoes, for example, will have a little bit of a different nutrition profile if we're talking about antithiocins and antioxidants and things like that. So all of that is housed on the website as well. Um, and one of my colleagues mentioned sweet potatoes has done nutrition nutri nutritional analysis, that was a hard word for me to say, on purple and white and will soon be posted to the website. Okay, so yes, I just want to share that. That is something that I think is going to be very helpful for RDs, um, whether for yourself or your family. We all need inspiration in the kitchen sometimes or whether it's for clients or another purpose. Please, please use that. We also have more blog posts and resources about agriculture. So if you do have questions about ag, that's not really something I'm covering in today's presentation. However, a couple weeks back, if you look under the video tabs here, there was a sweet potatoes presentation out in the fields where you can actually talk to a sweet potato farmer and she answers some questions. So if you do have ag questions, I would refer you back to that or you can post them in the chat and one of the one person, someone from North Carolina Sweet Potatoes may be able to direct you to further information about that. Okay, so let's continue on. We've talked a little bit about nutrition. I know that a lot of people are curious about perhaps working with different dietary lifestyles. So let's use, for example, perhaps you have a client who has type two diabetes and maybe they've been told that they can't eat sweet potatoes. And what do you do in that scenario? So first, I do want to say I'm not a certified diabetes educator. I don't specialize in type 2 diabetes, but as dietitians, we still have to be versed on what's up-to-date research and what's evidence-based, so it can be helpful to have these resources at your disposal. Again, you can find that on the website, but generally speaking, if we think back to the nutrient benefits that we discussed, sweet potatoes are a high fiber source. So that may be something that I would talk to with a client, having them understand how fiber can help blood sugar, help prevent the, the steep rise and drop in blood sugar. So it's important for stabilizing that. 
as well as protein. So that could be a good opportunity to show them what a balanced plate might look like. And yes, you can have some starches. It's usually portion controlled, but we want to make sure that we're pairing it with protein and fiber. So perhaps showing them a visual of what that may look like or directing them to a sweet potato recipe that perhaps is lower in sodium and has adequate protein with it. And that's why we have so many recipes to choose from. I also did wanna share, I did a little bit of research here um, through some studies, but fiber and magnesium, both of those are important for reducing insulin resistance. So magnesium is one of the micronutrients that are in sweet potatoes. Glycemic index can get a little confusing, but here is where we stand on that. So technically speaking, sweet potatoes are on the medium to high glycemic index, but it really varies about how someone is preparing them. So this is actually really interesting and, and probably goes back to food science. So if there's anyone here who is a food science whiz, they can probably explain this more. But if someone is boiling sweet potatoes, that is actually going to be associated with the lowest glycemic index. That's gonna have the lowest glycemic index. So if you were working with a patient with diabetes or pre-diabetes, perhaps being able to explain how to prepare a sweet potato to reduce the glycemic index could be helpful. So boiling is the lowest. On the other hand, baking is associated with the highest. So maybe we would modulate or try to moderate baking, perhaps reduce the portion size if they really liked the flavor of baked sweet potatoes. Um, so baked sweet potatoes have a glycemic index of 94. Boiled sweet potatoes have a glycemic index of 44. So that's a big difference. So thinking about that, but also again, reminding them that what foods they pair those sweet potatoes with can make a difference too. Again, talking about the fiber, most of it being insoluble fiber, which we know is associated with health benefits, such as reduced risk of diabetes, improved gut health, um, improved cardiovascular health. So in these instances, kind of like I mentioned earlier, where we're talking about what they can add to their diet rather than what they can subtract, just I try to minimize the scare tactic here and really remind them that if they like sweet potatoes, they can certainly incorporate them in their diet because there are so many nutritional benefits. But perhaps it wouldn't be, you know, coated with maple syrup, but instead maybe we would boil it and pair it with a three to four ounce serving of protein and some ample greens or vegetables on the side for a more balanced meal and show them what that would look like. I did touch on the heart health part before, but again, reminding, you know, fiber comes into play there, the potassium content that can help lower blood pressure. And then I would maybe lead to thinking about other forms of added sodium that they have in their life and just bringing awareness because a lot of times clients just aren't aware of added sodium, whether it's in the packaged products they're eating or how much salt they're adding at the table. So thinking about things like that. Before I, I head into talking a little bit about how I use them with athletes, I just want to check the chat here. What are some misconceptions, misunderstandings you hear most often about sweet potatoes? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, the glycemic index is a little bit confusing and, and people who have diabetes or are trying to modulate their carbohydrate intake might think it's a black and white scenario where they cannot eat them at all. Um, and compared to other starches, especially if you're boiling them, sweet potatoes are, are lower in glycemic index. So I think really trying to show them some of the research for that or decrease the scare tactics, show them how they can incorporate it. Um, some of the other, let's see, other misconceptions I hear about sweet potatoes, just I think it mostly myself relates to them being too high in carbohydrates. I'd be curious to hear from some other dietitians here though what are you hearing about sweet potatoes? Are there any, anything that you're hearing from your clients or in your personal life that maybe you don't know how to respond to or you're unsure about? Okay, sweet potatoes versus yams. I had a feeling this may come up. Um, a lot of people are confused about the difference. So I will say probably what you're seeing in the grocery store that's labeled as yams are probably sweet potatoes. 
we actually have a great article about that on the sweet potato website that really it's kind of like a quiz is it this or that because yams and sweet potatoes both are tubers and they have things in common but yams are some yams can be very big like huge bigger than you would see as a sweet potato and they often have a rougher skin um, and they're more like yucca like more of the texture of yucca so I don't know if you can find yams in the grocery store. I do know that most of the time people are interchanging the the names of sweet potatoes and yams and the yams that you're seeing are actually likely sweet potatoes. But again, thinking that there are plenty of varieties of sweet potatoes around, so you may not you may just not think of it as a white sweet potato. White sweet potatoes can exist and they are certainly grown within the US, so perhaps grocery stores are labeling them as yams without recognizing that it's just a different variety of sweet potatoes. Um, okay, so they've linked that in the in the comments here, pop quiz, sweet potato, or yam. It's actually pretty fun to take because you might be surprised. That is, that's a great point. That's probably a misconception that I see among clients is just not knowing the difference because in my local grocery store, they are labeled as yams. If I try to do an online grocery order, it may say yams when I'm looking for sweet potatoes but I know that that's this I know that they mean that sweet potatoes consumers may not know that so that could be a good area for education in that aspect okay. my customers often say sweet potatoes are a health food and will eat a lot of sweet potato fries without thinking about how much fat they may have from the frying yeah, that's a good point. Thinking about what are they pairing the sweet potatoes with. So thinking that if they're only eating healthy foods, they can eat as much as they'd like. So that's another great area for education. Maybe just talking to them about, well, what are we pairing it with? How much oil? Are we adding a lot of salt? Are there alternatives that we could add for some more seasoning or flavors? So cinnamon can be great. We know cinnamon has some health properties with it. Um, if you're wanting more of a sweet flavor, I like to do a lot of garlic things, Italian seasoning. Um, if you're someone who likes a more spicy, there's paprika or red pepper flakes. There are a lot of other ways to season sweet potatoes too that maybe consumers aren't seeing in mainstream media. So reminding them some of the other ways to enjoy some of those aromas or flavors in the kitchen. Is it possible to eat sweet potatoes raw? Have you ever done recipes like that? I have not done recipes like that, and I have never tried eating a sweet potato raw. Maybe someone from the commission can chime in on this, but my understanding is that it the starches are not broken down there, and I don't think it would be palatable. Any recipe that I'm um, use, using them in a non-traditional way, so perhaps I'll microwave them and then use the flesh for something like a hummus or a cookie dough or mixed in a pasta I'm cooking it first so I am not aware of anything raw not to say it can't be done maybe someone has tried it someone commented yams are huge yeah they really are like they're once you see how big a yam can be they are very big and very heavy okay let's see what else I'm always happy to hear when a person says I don't eat any carbs and later find out they're eating sweet potatoes and fruit. Yes, I think uh, that's a mindset that a lot of clients bring and, and maybe they think they're doing something, I'm using good in quotations here, by not eating carbs because influencers are promoting low carb diets or carbs have this rap of being a bad food when in reality as dietitians we do have to educate and remind them that carbohydrates do have a lot of health properties, um, energizing properties. They modulate our blood sugar and give us energy and they are necessary. So I, I think it's good to kind of dispel that myth and just remind them that carbohydrates are present in sweet potatoes, but so are plenty of other nutrients. Fruits and vegetables do provide carbohydrates. I think sometimes people might see sweet potatoes as a vegetable. So um, that could be a little confusing to consumers, but if they are using that to increase their fruit and vegetable intake, I think that's a really good thing. Sweet potato hummus. Mm -hmm. There are so many fun ways to use them. Um, 
another, let's see, I think I had another fun way. I'll have to um, refer back to the website there, but one thing I do a lot is pair sweet potatoes with eggs. That's a really good combination that a lot of people have not tried yet. Another thing I do is if you have your sweet potato and you cut it into like a coin shape, so a little bigger circle rather than a french fry shape, you can use them for sweet potato nachos. So again, we're still getting carbohydrates like we would with regular nachos, but we're getting a slew of other nutritious benefits and fiber that we would not be getting with, with regular chips. So this allows someone to still enjoy other foods with it, and maybe they're using healthful toppings like corn or black beans or any protein that they like, chicken, beef, tofu, anything like that. You top the sweet potato coins as you would, um, add some cheese, add tomatoes, add guacamole, hummus, salsa, whatever you want. But the base is made with sweet potatoes. So the sweet potatoes nachos, that's a popular one on my site as well. And one that I really like to do. Another fun thing is, and, and another thing to think about too, is thinking about the culture that your client comes from. So again, we don't want to be the dietitian that we're just dispelling things that are important for their culture and, and saying, oh, you shouldn't be eating that, you can't eat that. But what about if we meet them where they are and think about foods that are important in their culture, but maybe we can add nutrients to them or suggest an alternate way to prepare them or see if they would be open to it, right? I'm always trying to do some motivational interviewing with clients and see you know, what they're comfortable with and maybe they've just never thought of it. So one thing we like to do here is just add mashed sweet potatoes to like um, quesadillas or a burrito. Just do a layer of sweet potato puree in there. Or we've done pizza dough. So that's another recipe. I think that's on um, the Sweet Potato Commission site. It's certainly on my blog as well. There's an Italian sweet potato dough that I have where we're mixing sweet potato with almond flour. And then that's the basis of your dough rather than pizza dough. So something like that, and then they can load it with their favorite fiber-rich fruits and vegetables or a protein option. So really thinking out of the box is helpful. Someone said, I love Korean soy braised sweet potato. Yes, that sounds delicious. Um, and that could be that could be a really helpful, healthful way of incorporating it in someone else's culture. So I think we're almost running out of time. I could talk about this for hours. You all, I, I love sweet potatoes, very passionate about it. Um, I didn't get to talk so much about the sports nutrition thing, but the last thing I'll say is just, if you do work with athletes, I find doing a performance plate or showing a visual of a plate is really helpful. So showing carbohydrates, what that could look like, reminding them that it doesn't just have to be grains or bread, sweet potatoes are a great option for that. And certainly talking about pre-exercise, the carbohydrates that are going to help fuel their muscles and then post-exercise the carbohydrates that are going to help replenish their muscles. So that's very important in addition to the antioxidants that can help manage the inflammation from exercise. So I do think for any active clients, sweet potatoes can be a great topic of discussion as well. And we do have more information on that on the website. So again, my name is Sarah Schlichter. You can find me at bucketlisttummy.com. I'm on Instagram, bucketlisttummy underscore RD. If you are interested in learning more about our upcoming RD ambassador program, I encourage you to download the toolkit. That way we have your information, but also you can use the toolkit in your practice or just for your own personal use. Um, again, we break it down by month and we talk about different social media copy that you can share about or different recipes that fall within each month's theme or different um, thinking about holidays, how you can include sweet potatoes. Obviously we think about Thanksgiving, but what about Christmas or the 4th of July or Valentine's Day? There's several other ways that we can incorporate this nutrient dense food into our diet. So you can check all of that out and see sweetpotatoes.com. And oh, dogs, <laughs> my dog, Okay, so raw sweet potatoes, maybe that's maybe we can use them for dogs because someone said that their dog loves raw sweet potato wedges. My dog, her name is Tater, and she loves cooked sweet potatoes, so we have to add that to her food. So it's really a family food for all of us here. Thank you all for checking in. 
Um, I do hope you check out the toolkit. If you want to get in contact with me about anything I talked about today or just transitioning to an RD, anything about that, I'm more than happy to talk. You can find my email on the website or it's sarah at bucketlisttummy.com. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. Um, but again, just feel free to reach out at any time. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday. Please go ahead and download that toolkit. Use the North Carolina Sweet Potato site for any resources you need for yourself or for clients. And feel free to send any feedback along for what else we can include to make your life a little bit easier. Thank you for joining me and I hope you all have a wonderful day.